Welcome to Minds of Mountain Film. I'm Josh Bernstein, and my guest today is conservation biologist, Dr. Tom Lovejoy. Tom, it's a pleasure and an honor to be sitting here with you. You are a true heavyweight in the world of conservation and biology, and, and your accolades, your, your positions are endless. <laughs> the the uh, former chief biodiversity advisor to the president of the World Bank, currently the bio biodiversity chair of the Heinz Center for Science, Economics, and the Environment, currently the chair of the science panel for the global environmental facility that's and, and the list goes and just a troublemaker on and on and on and on and, and you've coined uh, the, the term uh, i'm trying to remember from our conversations the other day biological diversity was that's that right. you, you came up with that in 1980 yeah. 1980 and you've been a, lo a long time uh, expert and and studier of the amazon especially in the brazilian amazon yeah, absolutely basin, since yeah. what, 1965 is that 45 years god god wow so as someone who's been to the amazon and and, and appreciates the wonders of the planet and the importance of the Amazon to the rest of the, the world and our ecosystem. What is, what is your position on how things look today? So, how dire is it? So actually, I mean, in terms of the Amazon itself, uh, we now know that a combination of the climate change that's already going on, together with the effects of de deforestation and fire, uh, suggests that you could have a tipping point uh, in the southern and eastern Amazon in which basically it would die back because it doesn't have enough rain to be a rainforest. Okay. So the, the good news is, is you can actually build back a margin of safety if you do aggressive reforestation. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment we're at 18 percent so we're, we're quite close. If, we, if people are clear-cutting the forest, uh, so old growth is gone, the ecosystem is gone, can that can that biodiversity be restored if people did have the initiative and willpower? So, I mean, assuming that the species are still there, sure, uh, you could probably rescue most of them in a real, really active restoration project. Yeah. Uh, but it will be uncharted territory. You just have to learn by doing. Yeah. Right. And, if, and the, as you said, if the species are there, but the truth, the sad truth is that many of the species are, are not going to be there. Probably not, and we probably don't even know the names of some of them. Yeah. Well, this is. Can, can you tell me about the, the, the process of understanding biological diversity? Uh, how is that assessed? Can, is it possible to count the number of species on the planet, or is this too large a number? We, you know, we still can't even give you within a factor of ten the number of species on the planet. Uh, you know, there was a time when it was thought to be about three million. And probably what people use right now is about 10. But when you really get into the diversity of microorganisms, mm -hmm. which have a huge power in making the planet function, uh, it's probably way off the charts. And, and is it true then what we've been hearing this week in a mountain film about how species are dying before we even have a chance to, to acknowledge that? That we are losing yeah. such an alarming rate. This background rate of extinction throughout history, as I, as I understand, and we discussed this earlier, that, that one, one species per thousand years was the natural average background extinction rate? Is yeah, at least in, you know, in recent millions of years. Yeah. And so what we're looking at today is at least a thousand times that, if not 10,000 times that. I mean, it's, it's one of these exponential curves. Is, is this, could it be argued, well, we've had five of these before. What's the problem with the sixth one? It's just nature uh, working through a cycle. Well, other than the ethical and moral issues mm -hmm. of affecting all these living things that have exactly the same length of heritage and time as we do, uh, the difference is we live here and we depend on it uh, in ways that most people don't appreciate. Uh, but this planet works not as a physical system. It works as a biological and physical system. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to do that to ourselves. Sure. So this is the only extinction that is actually being caused by us, by humans. That's right. Whereas is, the other ones... This is probably the only time a single species has caused a major extinction event. You know, and we're not quite there yet. We're mm -hmm. in the early stages. Um, and that gives us an opportunity to rise above our self-centered ways. and. Uh, actually think about ourselves in a larger self-centered context sure. uh, and protect the biology of our planet. The, the scientific community, though, is, is how convinced? Fairly convinced, completely convinced, determined that if things do not change, we're on a trajectory towards this extinction? Yeah. 
So it's really interesting. There is not a single naysayer about there being an extinction problem. Uh, anybody who's halfway qualified uh, know that it's going on. Whereas with climate change, there were some naysayers? Uh, there used to be a lot more, and now they're really fringe, mm -hmm. uh, but they're there. You don't have anything like that in the biodiversity crisis. I assume that climate change is one of the factors that's, that's climate, contributing to the biodiversity loss. Climate change is a huge factor. Biology as a planet is probably more sensitive uh, than anything else that humans should care about mm -hmm. uh, to climate change. Uh, you know, two degrees is just too much for the ecosystems of the planet. And it will also, you know, simultaneously, you know, bring us four to six meters of sea level rise and wipe out nations and coastal environments and island environments. Uh, so it's time to get it together and think big uh, and manage the living planet. What, what, in terms of thinking big, then, what is it that, if the scientific community is so convinced uh, and the data that, that we've been presented with here in Mountain Film is also alarming. It's, it's serious stuff. What is it that people can do? Is our scientists banding together to say we got to get the word out? It seems here in America, anyway, there's been less focus on this being the year of biodiversity. I understand in Europe there's greater awareness. In South America, closer to the Amazon, there's greater awareness. But are scientists trying to harness the, the, the message in the media and try and get the word out? Well, I mean, obviously scientists are working at it. It's just harder to do in this country where there's so much distraction. Mm -hmm. um, but what we really need to do is, I mean, we just need to think on a planetary scale. Stop sort of being defensive. Uh, and with total respect to a lot of good things that have been done, uh, not think small. Yeah. Not be defensive. Uh, and just make the point that we need to get into restoration of ecosystems on the scale of the planet. And that will pull CO2 out of the atmosphere, mm -hmm. some, uh, and make all those ecosystems much more robust. What else, in addition to the CO2 and, and the climate change issues, would, is conservation something that people should be, can we protect these areas where biodiversity is still intact? Well, there, you know, it's, it's very important to have more protected areas uh, around the world, uh, places which pretty much left untouched. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a mistake to think that will do it. You actually, you actually have to think of the entire landscape, uh, all the oceans, all the fresh waters, yeah. uh, and think about that as one continuous living system uh, that we need to nurture. Is this, this type of audacious uh, consolidation of, and acknowledgement of resources, can that can the actions necessary to affect this type of control or preservation be done by individuals? Is this a, is this a movement that we need people to be more eco-friendly and aware, yeah. or is this governments that just have to wake up and say, uh, the president of the U.S., president of Brazil, president of, of uh, African mm -hmm. nations have to work together to, to solve this problem at the at the higher levels? It's actually all of the above, because okay. uh, you have biodiversity at the very local level, all the way to the national level, or indeed you know the planetary level. Uh, and so there's a role here for absolutely everybody mm -hmm. uh, to make a real contribution. If someone is watching this and they want to find a way to make a change or a difference or a contribution, what would you say to him or her? Uh, I guess uh, two or three things. You know, one, find out what your local conservation organization is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, learn from them. Uh, second, make sure you know what your elected officials are doing. And if you don't like it, tell them. Right. And thirdly, you know, once having looked at all of that, you'll probably figure out some additional things you can do. Yeah, but being involved, I, I suppose at this point it's optional, but it sounds like if we don't fix things soon, it won't be optional anymore, that we have to make these changes. Otherwise, we're looking at the collapse of ecosystems and ultimately the, the web that supports all life. Uh, that's certainly true. I mean, the, the third global biodiversity outlook identifies 13 tipping points, only one of which is that Amazon example. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just should not go there. Of these 13 tipping points, how, how far are we from that tipping point in each of the community? Well, actually pretty close. So, At all 13? Uh, not absolutely everyone, but you know, coral reefs is already happening. Right. Um, 
the Amazon is 2% deforestation away from that happening. Yeah. Um, ocean acidification is already taking place. Um, so there's just a huge number of things at a very large scale affecting the living planet. But we don't need to, 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 to play. I mean, I've heard people say, well, unless aliens come here and, and give us some technology beyond our understanding, <laughs> there's no way we can turn back the, the clock enough to fix this. Not true? I uh, can't turn back the clock for anything that's gone. Yeah. Uh, but as long as a, as a living plant or animal or a microorganism still exists, there is still hope. Can it be done with 7 billion people, 8 billion people, 9 billion people? Are well, we the, more, the more people there are and the more intense their consumer habits, the harder it is to do it. Um, and so I think we just really need to redefine what the quality of life really is Yeah. Uh, and then move forward. What is it, just curious, what is it that motivates you or that gives you the, the, the stamina to push through 40 plus years of watching biodiversity decline and you know, where yeah. is it do you, do you feel like there's hope or is this just a scientific so, pursuit and more data and no it's much more than a scientific pursuit for me uh, I'm, I'm just wonder motivated by the wonder and glory of life on earth mm -hmm. uh, but you know a lot of things have happened on the positive side of the ledger and so whereas when I arrived in the Amazon, you know, that's equivalent to the 48 states. There was one national park, one national forest, and one indigenous area mm -hmm. demarcated. Now it's 57% under some form of protection. Uh, so a lot of really good things have happened, and things yeah. that we used to think were impossible uh, have become possible. Have you enjoyed mountain film? How could I not? I know. <laughs> Agreed. But I think that this community, one of the reasons why I think we enjoy coming here is because this is a community that tries to affect that positive change and help open people's eyes to, to the realities of biodiversity yeah. loss and hopefully encourage them to make the changes. Well, it, it's very clear. I mean, it's just all the way down to how the, the, the town manages the, the runoff from its streets. Yeah. Well, but I think beyond the, the practical aspects of yeah. Telluride, there's the community of people here who are also trying yeah. to get the word out. And yeah, and I was just saying, I mean, a community wouldn't go through that effort about the runoff yeah. if they didn't care about these things in the larger context. Yeah. So perhaps others, other people in other communities can, can learn from Telluride and other people who are interested in the films and lectures here can... Absolutely. They should come see it firsthand. Right. Agreed. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> Tom, thank you. It's a pleasure. Okay. It's great. Enjoy the rest of Mountain Film. Will do.